I'm gonna get started, y'all. It's, it's, you know, something's been on my heart for the last, I don't know, for the last few weeks. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna get started. And I apologize because some of what, if you were here last week, some of this you've heard, but it's just been on my heart. So I, I know if it's been in my heart, maybe it's somebody in this audience that just need to hear this message tonight. And with that being said, you know, movers, y'all have been rocking with me for the better part of a year. Like I just crossed that finish line of a year every single Monday night, getting on the gram, IG live, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and just bringing straight up motivation, inspiration, education, and really just trying to pour in to everybody who's like me, just like-minded individual, people who just want more out of life. And I often sit and I think to myself because, you know, they, they have this saying, you know, ignorance is bliss. You know, what you don't know, you just don't know. But it's a bad thing when you know. And even on this journey that we've been on together, you know, it's something to be said about the mindset of somebody who is just focused. They're just driven. Somebody who is living in the grip, like literally living in the grip of obsession to where you just can't turn it off. Like I am just driven. I have a dream. I got something in my head that I see that hasn't materialized yet. It hasn't come to fruition yet, but it is so real to me and I can't turn it off. No matter what I do, I just can't turn this thing off. And y'all know this feeling. So it's one thing to not know this feeling and you sleepwalk through life. It's okay. Life is good. You take it as it comes. Live life on life's terms. But what happens when you say F that? Nah, I can't live life on life's terms. I know what my reality is. But I know there's more for me. And like I said, I've been doing this thing on IG Live for the better part of a year. Just broke that year mark. And looking over my life, had you asked me a year ago, would I be popping? Would I have hundreds of followers every single Monday? Thousands of followers every single Monday that's tuning in. I would have said absolutely because all I know is what I know. I've been there. I've had success. You're looking at a person who I've made millions. I've built businesses. I have been part of a culturally relevant and significant company that shaped the way people think bad boy records in the middle of it in the 90s going into the 2000s not just as a role player but as somebody who literally was on the front line who was key to helping put bricks in that building but when you walk away, like I did, like literally, I did it and I walked away from it. I didn't get kicked out of the music industry. I left. If I decided to go back tomorrow, I'm worth a whole hell of a lot of money. But what happens when you say what I did yesterday, that's just what it is, it's yesterday. I got to keep going forward. And I did an interview last week. I get called for interviews all the time. And I say no to a lot of them. And I didn't understand. Sean, why do you keep turning down these interviews? And last week I did an interview. And all they wanted to talk about was past successes. Things that I did years ago. Oh, Let's talk about the good old days. Let's talk about the bad boy era. Let's talk about you creating the Global Spin Awards. Let's talk about Power Moves Inc. And for somebody who is driven, 
See, other people would look at that and pat themselves on the back and their head would get swollen. But for somebody who was truly driven, I don't want to be reminded that the best part of my life is behind me. Like, is that the way that y'all look at me? Is that all that my legacy is going to be about? Nah, screw that. And as I'm talking and I'm giving all of the old stories and I'm, you know, chopping it up and remembering the only thing that I could focus, I can't wait for this interview to be done. And then I started to think about how painful must it be to be a recording artist? Like all of us know how Mary J. Blige killed the 90s, killed the early 2000s. Do you know how painful it must be? Or at least I would think, I never talked to her about it, but for somebody to have to go on that stage, even though you're getting paid for it, even though people are coming out every night to see you, you're able to tour. You're able to get up there and do what you, but you have to sing songs and you've been singing them same songs for 20, 30 years now. That's not how movers think. The great Stevie Wonder. I listen to this man every week, at least once a week. I'm sure he is tired of singing the songs in the key of life. I'm sure as many hits as he has penned, as many notes as he has sung, as many hit records as he has made, Stevie in his early 70s would do anything, just give me another hit, but that's the way. If you a mover, if you were ambitious, what you did yesterday is just that. You are constantly living in the championship rounds. You're constantly living in the championship rounds. And movers, I need y'all to listen up because I talked about this last week. When prize fighters, when they go in the ring, like when you at the top of your freaking game, like many of y'all come because you're starting your businesses, you're starting your careers. Maybe you've been into your career for a while, but you want to take it to the next level. And you come every week and you ride this thing out with me. But again, ignorance is bliss. Because being on this side of the game, being obsessed with success, being obsessed with changing your life. Do you understand you have to live in the championship rounds? When them prize fighters... When they get paid millions and millions and millions of dollars to get in the ring, it's 12 rounds. But the hardest rounds of them all are the last three. That's why they call it the championship rounds. Round 10, 11, and 12. That is what separates one fighter from another. That is where no matter how hard you've been working, no matter how much you have done for the last 30 minutes, you got nine more minutes to go out there and you got to put it all on the line because in the championship round, that's where legends are made. And as I sit and I'm thinking even about myself, it's easy for me to sit on my old accolades. It's easy for me to say, you know what? I can ride out what I did yesterday for the rest of my days. I can do my victory lap again and again and tell them same old stories, work records, be down in the music. I can do all of that. That's the easy part. But I live in the championship rounds. Some of y'all haven't had y'all success yet. And some of y'all are in rounds one through nine. And those rounds are difficult. Those rounds, don't get it twisted. You're in a fight. But you have to live in the championship rounds. And as I am speaking, 
And I'm getting speaking engagements here, speaking engagements there. It ain't like I'm booked every week. It ain't like my name is on the marquee. It ain't like right now. When I started this, you couldn't have told me that by now, I wasn't going to be running neck and neck with Eric Thomas. I wasn't going to be running at neck and neck with Inky Johnson. But it's nothing I can do except keep getting up and putting one foot in front of the other. I'm in round 10 right now. These are the difficult rounds. And I just needed to do something because as the speaking career is going, but it's going slow, I needed a win. Sean, you got to do, I just sometimes movers, you just need to do something for you. Sometimes when you have no control, you have no control on your circumstances. You have no control on anything going on in your life. You're doing what you can do, but it ain't happening the way you planned it. Sometimes you have to take control the best way you know how. And for me last week, like I told y'all, I went out. And I ran a half marathon just to do it. I needed to take some kind of control in my life. But I needed to do something that was difficult. I needed to do something that Sean had never done. I needed to do something that the average person just won't do. So I laced up and just hit the road. And see, the thing is, when you hit the road, it's you versus you. You out there, you're by yourself. And when I came and I finished that marathon, it was like, damn, I never thought I, I'm not no runner. I hate running, but I hate losing more. I hate this journey that I'm on. I'm trying to be the best in the world at it. But this thing right here, Sean has no control over it. Only thing I can do is get up and deliver. Only thing I can do is every Monday night come in here and give it my best. But out there, I just needed to take control of my life. And once I did it, I said, let me just prove to myself it wasn't a fluke. And last night, Sunday night, I went out and I did it again. I said, you know what? It hasn't even been a week since I, since I ran that first half marathon. Let me go out... And let me just do it. I just need to prove to Sean, you still got it. I just needed to prove to Sean, you're different. I understand that this process you're on, that's what it is. It's a process and you got to go through it. But being out there on that road, you can control that. It's difficult. Absolutely. You ain't no damn runner. But you need to challenge yourself in a way that you never have. Go and you, you did it. Do it again. And I went out there last night and it's no fanfare. It's no medals. It's no crowds cheering you on. It's, it's just you versus you. And it's two things that I learned while I was out there running. Number one, half of the difficulty of getting through those 13 miles. It's just being patient. I don't run fast. I do 11 minute miles on average. I start out maybe at nine, but by the time I'm done, I'm up to 13 because I'm just so wore out. But my average is somewhere around 11 minutes, just over 11 minutes. So I know I'm going to be out there for two and a half hours running. So as I'm starting and I'm in this race, everything in me want to quit. Everything in me wants to stop. Everything in me wants this pain to go away. But I have to be patient because I got two and a half hours coming to me. And every time I hit a lap, every time I go for another half hour, every time that I am running, and it feels like I can't take another step. My mind is playing so many tricks on me. I have to remind myself, just be patient. Just be patient. Run your race, Sean. But the one thing you will not do is give up. Keep going. And then every time I get to the end, 
when I'm around 11 and a half miles, the same thing happens to me. I literally know I just got two left. That's the only thing I got to do is two left. And I'm strong. And I'm running. And I have already been patient. I got two miles left, but the hardest part is that championship round. Here I go again. I'm in round 10, 11, and 12. You would think that the easiest part of that run would be the last two miles because you know the end is near. And I'm telling y'all, that is the hardest part of that run. As much as I'm doing something, that I can have control over as much as I'm doing something that when I get back to the crib and say to myself, Sean, you did it. I can just feel good and satisfied and feel like I've done something. Everything in me times a thousand wants to quit when I see the finish line right before me. And as I was running last night, I thought about my man, Ed Hennings, who's a good friend to this show here. And me and Ed one day were speaking offline. And for any of y'all that don't know Ed, Ed is a good dude. Ed did 20 years locked up. And I'll never forget one day I was talking to him. And Ed told me, he said, you know what, Sean? The hardest part of those 20 years was the end. And I was like, yo, what are you talking about, Ed? He said, yo, Sean, them first five years, he was like, they flew by. But Ed was a dude who was looking at life. And then he got 40 years. And I asked him, I said, yo, 40 years? That's a long freaking time. He was like, yo, Sean, coming from off that life, I knew I can do 40 years. But he started going to the board at 10 years. And every time he would go to the board, they would hit him with two years. Come see us in another two years. Every time he go back, come see us in another two years. And right around his 15th year in, they started to tell him, come see us in a year. Which for anybody who's been locked up, that's just a sign letting you know you're close. And then they started to tell him, come see us in eight months. But he said that is when it became so exhausting and so hard. Everybody around him in the yard knew, Edge, you're going home. It's close, man. But for him, the end, he did 20 years, but the end was the hardest part. And for y'all, I'm saying this because I need y'all to understand. Some of y'all are going through some hard times. Some of y'all are going through something and it just feels like what you're going through won't end. It feels like this thing has a key. I've been on this race. I have put it all on the line. I've done everything I can do. And I'm just wiped out. I'm exhausted. I'm telling you, you in the championship rounds right now. You, right, you, right, you, this is round 10. It's 11. It's 12. But this is what champions are made. All you got to do is continue to press on. The one thing you can't do is turn back now. You done put in too much work. You done been at this thing just too long. That obsession that you have, that drive that you have, that will that you have, that thing that you got that you just won't quit right now, you have to apply it and you have to think, to, I just got to be patient. But I got to go harder now than I've ever gone before. And I'm telling you movers, if you find yourself in a position right now as I speak and you're saying I've done everything I can do, Sean, and ain't nothing happening. This is the process. I'm telling you, take control of your life. I took to the streets. I ran for no good reason. I'm not a runner. Nothing about me wants to be out there. I just needed some control in my Do something you have control over. Just to remind yourself, I'm a bad mother effer. I don't care what nobody say. I'm not built like them. And they damn sure ain't built like me. I just needed a refresher. I just needed to look myself in the mirror and say, the person I thought you was, you still are, Sean. Your day is coming. 
You done been down that road. The, the easy road is for me to go back and talk music. The easy road is for me to go back and talk marketing. The easy road for me is to bring the Global Spin Awards back. But I, will, I got dreams this way. Movers, I don't know if you've seen success. And if you have, God bless you. You can never, ever, ever just rest on your laurels. We seen that this weekend with the greatest female wrestling champion ever to get in the octagon, Amanda Nunes. Amanda Nunes is the baddest chick on planet Earth. Champ, champ, two weight divisions. But she started to sleep. She started to believe her own hype. She lost that thing. And there's always somebody who's younger, who's hungrier, who's more determined, who ain't had it yet, and they want what you got. And Amanda Nunes winds up losing one of her belts. Did it make the other woman better? Probably that night. Did it take anything away from Amanda? No, but Amanda probably has to sit and look herself in the mirror and understand, I got to get that eye of the tiger back. I can't just rest on the fact that I was the baddest woman in mixed martial arts last year. I still got it. I still, and movies, y'all still got it. If you've never done it before, you can do it. If you've done it and you're trying to do it again, I'm telling you, stay focused. And I'll leave y'all on this. A woman who's pregnant, there is nothing easy about going through a pregnancy. There's nothing these, that is nine months of being uncomfortable. That is nine months of pain. That is nine months of looking in the mirror, hating your body. From the moment a woman gets pregnant, she gets the morning sickness. It starts out bad, but you got nine months of that. But right around when that baby is ready to come into the world. Right around when this thing, this journey you've been on is about to end, that water break. And that water breaking signifies you're in the championship rounds. And those women, when they water break, they learn or they know two things. One, this thing is about to be over. The baby's on its way. Everything I've been working hard for, it's right there. I can see the finish line. But number two, I'm about to go into the worst pain of my life. Ain't nothing about these championship rounds going to be easy. I'm about to suffer. I am about to be tortured. I am about to be in so much pain. But on the other side of this pain, it's victory. It's victory. So movers, you're in the championship rounds. I'm in the championship rounds. You have to live with this mentality. If I'm going to outwork my competition, if I'm going to do something that never been done, if I'm going to surprise myself I know what my dreams are, but if I'm going to surprise myself and outdo my own dreams every single day, you have to get up and you got to work like you are in those championship rounds. This is what we do as movers. I'm on this journey with y'all and I can tell you because I cannot wait till that day comes to where my name is up on top of that marquee. Just so I could say, movers, we did this together. It wasn't Sean. Y'all been here with me from day freaking one. If I can do it, you can do it. Keep pushing. Don't ever forget, I love y'all. And stay in those championship rounds. Peace and love, movers.